Good morning, happy Friday, except for those of us who are in, in Intel, and I'll go over Intel. You boy, listen, when Jim Cramer cried because of uh, Facebook earnings and the hubris uh, of that management team, uh, I don't think there was anything wrong. You know, we'll go over Intel. Uh, my personal opinion, everything that was, uh, that was expected happened. So I thought it was priced into the stock. It's clearly not priced into the stock. So we'll go over QQQ. We'll go over Intel. We'll go over uh, PayPal CEO shocking the world, as he put it, which is a nice 5% down on that one. Uh, we'll go over uh, some of the reaction to Tesla. We'll go over some of the alpha picks that actually did really well. Uh, and Alpha Picks actually removed a stock from their portfolio today. Uh, we'll go over that one as well. Uh, we'll go over some emails that I got, <clears throat> bullish and bearish ETFs, uh, Berkshire Hathaway, um, Shopify, AMD. We'll, we'll go over a lot of stuff. I want to start off with, though, TrendSpider. Yesterday, they gave me a special sale. Uh, do not sleep on this one. It says it's uh, good for one day. They didn't tell me that it was going to end in one day, but they gave me a special sale. Uh, it goes from uh, 1044 Usually you save, uh, if you use the code DSP25, you'll save 25%. Well, it's 58% off now, $744 for the year. Uh, don't sleep on this one. I don't know if it's going to end in a day. I don't know if it's going to end in two days, but that's a deal on TrendSpider right now from 1044 for the year to 744. So if you've got a big enough portfolio, uh, you're going to go over here to uh, Linktree, L-I-N-K-T-R.ee. -E. I'll have the links in the newsletter. You can sign up for the newsletter, but Linktree will have it right here. You're going to sign up, uh, use the code DSP. I don't know if that gets you an additional 25% off, but you can try it. You can try it, but I think it's just the 58% off. Um, but you can try code DSP. Uh, what you're going to do is once after you sign up, use this email up here in the right-hand corner. And uh, you're going to email me. I will email you back a, um, a welcome letter where you can import my algorithms. You can import my watch list and scanners, everything that you want. The other tools that I'm going to go over, Seeking Alpha and Alpha Picks. Alpha Picks is $100 a year. And they basically tell you, we'll go over, they took one out. They didn't put a couple in, but they will put uh, one in on February 1st. So sign up for that one. Use this link. The Seeking Alpha Premium, we'll go over what you get with that. Um, but every tool that you want, the Daily Stock Pick newsletter, which is right here, um, this is a daily free newsletter. You can see I post I post daily. It shows up in your inbox. That way you don't have to sit here and listen to me for an hour talk. Um, but yeah, it's all at the link tree. You can get, join any of our social networks, um, visible, uh, which is a phone service, Weeble, uh, which is my preferred mobile platform to trade on. But the big thing is for free, you get the newsletter. And yesterday's newsletter was a masterclass in, uh, why I have some, uh, some humbleness to myself this morning. Uh, I was two for two with Tesla and um, with uh, Netflix, uh, but I missed it on Intel last night. Let's go over the Qs first, because Triple Q, <clears throat> if you're a paid member, you know what this means, but clearly I'm seeing a start to a button hook uh, on the top here. So it, it looks like we're going down. Core PCE was the big number. I went over it Monday how it was going to be a big number. Uh, core PCE came in line. It's 2.9 versus 3%. It's kind of in line, you know, nothing, nothing crazy, but you can see a button hook up there. Uh, you can see a volume shelf that has formed around 410. That's probably providing some support levels. There is some support about 423 right now in pre-market. You're at 425 down 0.2. It's kind of recovering from the reaction to the PCE. So maybe we continue up, but I am seeing some weakness. We still have confirmation. A anything that I'm saying, if it doesn't make sense to you. Go over here, sign up for the paid newsletter. Um, you can see right here, the education system uh, section has PE Golden Cross, Cross Up Bollinger Bands, Confirmation Button Hook. It has every term that I just said you can see on this chart. It's quite simple. It's 120 bucks a year. I think you get uh, quite a bit of knowledge out of that one. 
But the Qs, everything that's in there, you can see the MACD is way up here. The RSI is up at 72. It's overbought. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's kind of kind of an interesting one. Uh, Intel. Let's talk about Intel. Um, the big loss. Well, what I want to do first, Shea Boulard, which who's just a great, great um, uh, analyst on uh, on seeking. On, on, I'm sorry, I'm Twitter. Uh, X, Vaz, Vase, whichever one you want to talk about. But uh, Shea Boulard, he posted yesterday, let's take a look at how the top 15 perform- performers in SPY have stacked up so far. Juniper Networks, fantastic, 26%. NVIDIA, fantastic, 24%. AMD, fantastic, 21%. Uh, PanW, fantastic, 15%. Fortinet, which I said was a rebound play, fantastic, 13%. ALL, I have no idea. AVGO, that's Broadcom, fantastic, 12%. You can see there's quite a bit of these. Eli Lilly, core portfolio, that's up 9%. Uh, Meta, core portfolio, personal holding, up 10%. Um, for, uh, Pal- Palo Alto, number three, number, uh, no, I'm sorry, number four, number three, and number two, I all own personally, and they're in the core portfolio. So if you want to look at that list, understand that these are great, great um, uh, gr- lists to actually look at. Now let's look at Intel. Uh, Intel, uh, stumbles as weak guidance overshadows. Here's my note. Big loss based on guidance. Moved down 7%, which was anticipated. The move based on the options. That's what the option said. The option said Intel was going to move up to 7%. My assumption was it was going to move up 7% up. Uh, I do think this is a turnaround story. I see it continuing up to $50 at some point. In pre-market, it's trading at $44.70. I said $44 was my resistance level. You can see the VWAP is right here at $45. At $44.70, uh, I, obviously, it reached $50. I should have sold at $50. The learning is, hey, when I took that 5% profit, I should have absolutely taken that profit because this had run up so much into earnings. Um, what hit me was none of these numbers were unexpected. All of this should have been priced into the stock, but the guidance and the reaction was what wasn't, uh, wasn't, wasn't something there. Now, what am I going to do? Uh, the, the, the assumption is I'm, I'm probably going to sell out of this. It's in a retirement account. So taking the loss hurts even more than a brokerage account. It was $25,000. I'm probably down a couple thousand dollars. Do I think that Intel will make me that couple of thousand dollars in the near term? No, the, the one that might is AMD, uh, AMD on weakness. It is down. Let's see. It's down. I think 2%, 2.0%. It's at 176. Uh, the problem is it does still have a uh, confirmation. Um, earnings are coming out next week, January 30th. This is priced to perfection. And so uh, with, with weakness on this one, it, 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 it's, it's hard for me to get into this. The other one that I may actually just buy more of because they're similarly priced as far as PE goes is NVIDIA. And if, if we look at NVIDIA, um, the forward PE is 29, okay? That's the anticipated forward PE. NVIDIA's earnings come up it is on February 21st. So you've still got a lot of time. This will move with any guidance that AMD or any of the other chip makers actually say. So it, you look at the forward PE of 29 on NVIDIA, the forward PE of AMD is 46, So NVIDIA is actually cheaper on a forward basis. That is estimates. So if NVIDIA doesn't hit these estimates, um, you know, they've they've said that they are. SMCI came out and pre-announced that they are doing uh, fantastic. So it might be a good read. Where do I buy NVIDIA at? In my mind, I think you wait until it gets under 600. Um, But I don't want to wait because this one may, you know, with a good AMD showing, This one may go to 700. Again, the forward PE is what I'm specifically looking at. And is NVIDIA actually undervalued? Uh, Not NVD, NVDA we want to look at. Uh, And that's my question. I don't know. I mean, again, uh, I I say this and I don't think I've said it uh, uh, for a long time. But what your grandmother is making for Christmas dinner, whether it's meatloaf or turkey, it's already priced into the market. So don't think that you're playing a game that others don't know. And that's where I thought I made a mistake with Intel. 
I thought everything was priced into the market. It's clear it wasn't. And people were just taking, uh, taking, um, you know, taking profits. Uh, but I do think it's a two-horse race. And, you know, Jim Cramer's right. I mean, you'll, you'll hear me say that a couple of times a year. But I think it's a two-horse race in, in chips. And I think it's AMD. And I think it's NVIDIA. And I think AMD probably has a little bit with the, the rebound in uh, PCs. I think AMD may have it. So that's kind of my th- my thought. I will t- uh, telegraph what I'm going to do. I'll make a decision today. Fridays are never a great thing to make a decision on, uh, but I'll probably do something. I'll include this article in the newsletter if you want to see it. Um, but yeah, Intel. Uh, I'm taking a you know a, a little a little bit of a humble pie, if you will. Um, you know, listen, I made more money on, on, on NVIDIA. You can't win them all. You got to take your losses, take your lumps. And this is just one lump. I was wrong. Um, summary, Alpha Picks, which I said it's 100 bucks a year. Uh, URI and CMCSA, two of the biggest stock movers today on, uh, on Alpha Picks, Comcast and United Rentals. Both of them crushed earnings. And, and Alpha Picks goes over uh, exactly what they saw in these stocks and why they put them in the portfolio. In fact, I'll have a, um, a look at URI, United Rentals, because one of the, uh, the, the, the daily um, stock pick newsletter readers um, wanted me to look at it. But this article, I will include it in the newsletter. I don't know if you can read it unless you're a paid member. Um, so, and I don't think I can gift it to you because it's part of Alpha, Alpha Picks Group, but those two are, are really good. Um, really good picks. I mean, they, they really did great. Um, you know, soaring more than 14% in com United rentals went up more than 14%. Comcast went up more than 5% in midday trading. Now one that, um, the alpha picks, uh, actually removed and you can see, look at, look at this. I mean, this is the crazy part. Alpha picks total return 85% versus the S and P 29%. One of them that they removed that I actually sold is Exxon. It was taken out of the alpha picks. Um, they say, you know, drops to a hold rating. So they took it out of their alpha pick stuff. That's that's essentially it. Now, for 100 bucks, you get access to these articles. You get access to their entire portfolio. Uh, I like this service for 100 bucks. I mean, I, you know, again, 100 bucks for me, I think that's the low end of what you pay. Um, the, the premium service is $189 with my $50 off coupon. And you get these... Uh, uh, emails about your porf- uh, portfolio. I have the Daily Stock Pick core portfolio in there. You can see the top performers were Uber, Netflix, and Exxon. Ironically, Exxon comes out of the uh, the uh, the Alpha Picks, but it was up yesterday. Energy's kind of rebounding, but the bottom performers were Tesla, Boeing, and United Health. Tesla, I, I'd wait for confirmation on that one. Uh, we'll go over that a little bit uh, in a bit. Boeing, I don't know if I've said it, but I said it yesterday. Wait for a little bit. If you want to buy it under 200 I don't think that's a bad price. Uh, I think that's a good price. Just I think they have bigger problems than we actually know. Uh, but some of the, uh, the the Alaska flights are going back into play. Uh, United Health, that one, under 500 I think you just wait for confirmation. The problem with United Health is we just, they announced it, Cigna, I think, and Humana. Everybody's saying healthcare costs are going up and managed healthcare hasn't been able to raise their prices enough. What I wanted to focus on this one is QQQM. They went from a buy to a hold. Uh, QQQM, even though I have QQQ in the uh, core portfolio, QQQM, it's the same thing. It's just a, a little bit of a lower cost. I mean, it's slightly lower cost. Uh, that is went from a buy to a hold, and you're seeing a button hook up there too. So that's what I wanted to point out there. If you are interested in seeking off a premium, this is an email. You import your portfolio and you get news. You get all your ratings, everything, so that you don't even have to look at it. Again, I think seeking alpha picks. Um, I, I think alpha picks. I think seeking alpha premium. And I think TrendSpider, it's more about buying back your time so you don't have to sit there and watch charts all the time. Um, here's the list. Let's close this one. This is a list of the top 10 ETFs with the most bullish sentiments and biotech sentiment percentage, 78% jets, uh, you know, airlines have been being down, uh, oil services, OIH, this one I have in the, the, the trend spider. I scan for it. Um, harvest, 
This is a, a sentiment 70%. China, ironically. Spider sector, retail, horrible thing. XLP, XLF, which I said was the pick of the year. I think that's the sector of the year. I think for a full year, I think that one goes up. What's the bearish sentiment? Well, it's it's QQQ. And we talked about that having a button hook. It's KWeb, which is China. Uh, SOXX, which is the semiconductor because they've run so much. Uh, home builders, which have just run crazily. URA, uranium, cr- kind of run as, as well. Uh, SMH, which is kind of the same thing as SOXX, just a little bit different. Japan, which is at all-time highs. Um, though that 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 index has just con- continued to run but this is if you want to chart these these are really good to look at um, th- this is just based on sentiment um, I was watching CNBC yesterday and they said brk.b which is Berkshire uh, which is Warren Buffett and we can take a look at the stock um, the UBS I think let me see B um, UBS thinks that it's undervalued based on its holdings. You can see right down here, 368, you're trading at 380. This one has jumped up probably because Traveler's Insurance and other stuff, they're heavy into insurance. You can see right here where I said it's going to get back up there to 361 and we moved back up there. That's where that line came from. You're at all-time highs here. And UBS thinks that we're still undervalued. It was a CNBC Pro article, so I didn't do it. But I found this investor place um, from yesterday where uh, they said, Berkshire, the country, companies, cash reserves, and direct investments provide defensive upside in uncertain markets. Might be time to buy Berkshire. Uh, but I like the Berkshire. I like their AMD call. And I like their Shopify call. So that's an article that I'll include in the newsletter as well. Uh, Boeing, I just found the note. I forgot to mention yesterday that this stock may be broken. So even under 200, you may want to uh, just hold on this one. But Boeing, uh, there is the, the line that I put in there. Um, you can see. 200 right down here. I think this is a trading range between 200 and 230. It remains to be seen. This one in pre-market is up 0.559 at 203. I do think that this this line right here probably provides you some support. Could go lower. They do have earnings on January 30th next week. Just probably one to sit there and hold a little bit. Um, I, I'm, I'm not loading into it. I haven't sold it. I, I think I may add to it. I'm just not looking at a, um, you know, when the United Airlines CEO says, hey, we've lost confidence in Boeing, uh, you were a little bit, uh, you know, kind of thing. Here's some of the uh, the backlash from Tesla. Um, we were dead wrong, expecting Musk and team to step up like adults. This is Dan Ives, great, great analyst. Uh, in the room and give a strategic and financial overview of the ongoing price cuts, margin structure, and fluctuating demand. Instead, we got a high level view with another train wreck of a call for the street. Price target still three fifteen. Um, he's saying the price target is three, still three fifteen. My thoughts on Tesla. I don't own Tesla. I do own XLY, um, and that is the ETF that owns. Uh, I think fifty percent of the the actual ETF is b- split between um, Amazon and and Tesla. Uh, here's who does believe in Tesla. They just bought one hundred and seventy seven thousand shares. RK Kathy Woods. Um, she's been she's dollar cost averaging as it comes down. She continues to buy. Uh, remember, I said, hey, the algorithm got you in here at 210. It then got you out with a 13 percent loss. Literally the next candle. I would wait for confirmation. I don't think it's as bad um, as people say the problem. And 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 I'll go over the grade eight right now. The problem with Tesla, um, the catalysts are fewer and fewer. And I don't know if the company is an AI company or a car company. And and the valuation is starting to come into play if it's a car company. Remember, uh, Elon wants 25% of the company to protect himself to not get voted out. Um, That makes me think that Elon is more of a liability. Nobody is trying to get Elon out. But I think you wait to buy this one until he becomes less of a liability. So you wait to see what the board does. Do they dilute? Um, do they issue more shares? Do they have separate uh, share um, uh, classes? I mean, there's a lot of questions around Elon. So 
Uh, I think you wait until this period of, I, I think he called it uncertainty or something. I think you wait until that period of uncertainty is up. Uh, but that's what it is. Of all the grade eights, I'm bullish on Amazon. Uh, I'm super bullish on Amazon. I think Amazon has probably 180 in it. Their earnings are coming up. Uh, I Listen, Andy Jassy is, is just doing a fantastic job. February 1st, they're coming up. Uh, I think Netflix continues to kill it. Uh, I see this one going to 700. Uh, do I think that this gap back down to 495 will get filled? I don't, but I do think that you start to cover this one on a weak, uh, econ- a weak Fed issue, uh, a weak um, you know consumer issue. I think you come down. There's just no volume down here. I think 530 is probably your base on this one. Um, and I'm, I'm bullish on Microsoft because I do, I agree with Dan Ives and others. I think AI adds at least another trillion dollars over the next five years to this company. So I just bought another $50,000 worth of, um, uh, Microsoft in my parents' account at 404. Um, you know, do I think it's coming under 400? I think so at some point in time. So add in under 400. Uh, I think uh, of the rest of the grade eight. And, and again, remember it's still grade eight Apple, I think Apple grows on buybacks. You're seeing a button hook here, um, you know, coming down. Every time it hits close to that 200, it just comes back. I think AI is going to drive a new iPhone cycle. I I think you're fine in Apple. I wouldn't add it up here. It's going to have trouble getting over that 200. Meta, I think that with the boom in AI, uh, their expansion into hardware and the political advertising, this is easily a $400 stock. And if we look at a weekly on this one, and we just go back, you're back at all-time highs. So I, I think this one made a huge, huge recovery. 15% from all-time highs. So you could have made 15% if you just bought it during the golden cross. Um, but I think Meta is fine. And I think finally Google. Google would lead uh, the, the charge with AI and advertising. I think they're fine. I think their valuation is absolutely perfectly fine. Uh, yes, they will lose uh, money. Uh, we're going to go Google. Yes, they will lose money going to AI because it's going to cost them more. But the forward PE of 22 is not crazy for a company this diverse. So am I holding it? Yeah. Am I buying more? Nah, I'm waiting for it to probably come down below that 150 level. Um, and then I'll add more if I need to. Uh, as far as NVIDIA goes, uh, this is, you know, we went over this one. They have to show another quarter and guide higher. Uh, that may very well happen based on Meta and other large AI companies coming out and saying that they're buying more. Remember, SMCI came out and pre-announced their earnings. It, this the SMCI pre-announcing their earnings drove them up. Uh, let's see. That, that's just pre-announcing the earnings by 48%. Uh, we're going to see a, a little button hook here, and you're probably coming down. I'm probably going to trim this one significantly, even though it's going to make a, bre- a big uh, tax lot. I, I mean, that one's just too good to, you know, I'm waiting on their earnings. But if, if they announce some type of margin um, compression, even though the earnings are good, that one's going to get killed. So eh, I think that, that one's good. Let's talk about one that I do hold, which is PayPal. Um, the They had their event yesterday, and... Um, Brad Freeman, who is the stock market nude, just does a masterclass on, on what PayPal is. If you are invested in this one, I suggest you read this tweet. It is just, he's still, nothing changed about his PayPal approach. Um, he's slightly more confident in the team and focus, and, and uh, confident in its focus, uh, finally, on profits. Um, it, it, it's, you know, it, it, it's a, t- a tough one. I mean, they said they were going to shock the world. You're seeing a button hook here. Uh, algorithm got you in at 63. You're going to get out with a, a loss on this one. Uh, in pre-market, you're down 50. 60 is providing a support. You're seeing a, a significant, significant uh, kind of just hovering around this 200 day on the four, uh, four hour. And you're trading between 60 and 65. So if you want to get out, I would say dollar cost average your way around 60 and 65. I, th- there are a couple of things, and I wrote in the notes. Um, I'm not as aggressively positive as Brad. I may be trimming from here for small gains, and that's why I say the trading range 60 to 65. Since my main position is in a Roth, I may just chalk up the loss and move it to something that's actually working like AMD or an NVIDIA. Um, that's, you know, Brad's, Brad's analysis of this is absolutely correct. Now, 
Here's the chart from yesterday. On January 17th, PayPal CEO said they're going to shock the world on January 25th. They just uh, with you know released new AI features, a way to earn cash back through the PayPal app. The stock just crashed nearly 5%. Uh, again, it's, it's putting your money where it's able to gain, not, hey, I want to wait and see. There's two main issues. And the main issues that I see with PayPal um, and that I hear analysts say all the time, they're losing share to Apple Pay and Zelle. That's what's killing them. Uh, and it's the age demographics. Remember, I always say, if you go over to Linktree, uh, I always say, on, on you know, whenever I ask for the gifts, the tips, when you make money, gift me with Venmo. You can give me with PayPal. You can give me with Cash App. Those are the three that I have. Um, I do have Zelle. I just don't put it up here. Um, I use it sometimes to pay personal stuff, just when people want it. Um, I have noticed significantly younger people use Zelle. Significantly younger people use Cash App. When I say PayPal or Venmo, they look at me like, ew, ew. So, it, it, it again... That's kind of the issue that I'm seeing. So um, I, I think, you know, if you wanted to do something, I, I think in a more aggressive in the um, the payment space is a firm. Um, they just got a card, a credit card, a debit card. Uh, the attach rate on the card and direct deposit on the card is huge. They're getting closer to the customer than PayPal. Um, they're just doing more with loyalty. Now, would I buy it up here? Hell no, I wouldn't buy it up here. Would I buy it if when it dips down to uh, under 40? Absolutely, I would buy it when it has confirmation. The algorithm makes you 46% in this, okay? 46% over 24 months, this four-hour algorithm in TrendSpider makes you. You lose 32% if you just bought two years ago. We can look at the weekly on this one. Remember, this was part of the 2021 run-up where they, they IPO'd. It was highly anticipated. It's $153 stock up here, $170. You're down at $40, and it's still expensive. It's still expensive. But if you wanted to get into the, spa the space, I would say a firm. If you want more traditional, Visa just reported they're down on the pullback. I would add on MasterCard, I would add American Express just reported a solid quarter. American Express, solid one. Um, yeah, yeah. So there's your look at PayPal. I'm losing a uh, kind of short term support in this one. I, I would be adding it for long term, but I think that 60 to $65 range is where you're at. Now, Dale, um, this, the two bills, this was a great discussion. It's an hour long, so it's a little long, but these are two pre people, um, Bill Gurley and, um, Brad Gerstner, uh, the two B2 G BG two, cause they both had the, the initials BG. It's a solid, solid discussion. I think if you're listening in the background to me, you should probably listen to this one in the background. I like those two guys. I think it was great, uh, a great discussion. Now, there were four upgrades. Uh, no, I'm sorry, three that are, are affecting stocks right now. First one is coin. Coin's up 5% today. Um, market hasn't opened, but in 5%. Algorithm got you in at 122. You're trading at 126. This could be the turnaround that we talked about. Uh, it may not get down to 103. You may just be bouncing off this 120 level. Uh, if we look at this one, I'm going to pull this back to pretty much, if you look at this and we just look, this was the level 101 that I thought people were coming back to. Now, majority of people that goes back to July, they're holding in the 76 range. You can see it capitulated right here. They haven't sold out at this top which probably means that that these people that bought here are just holding on and looking. It's a long-term play. Coin is incredibly expensive. Incredibly expensive. The forward PE is 373. So you've got to have a super super long-term look at this one. Uh, now with all of the uh, ETFs that are coming out, it probably deserved a, a, an upgrade. Um, we can look at this one. January 23rd, which was three days ago, JP Morgan, uh, they downgraded them with an $80 target. I'd be a little bit careful at this one. Again, the, the, the price target is $128. you are trading at $126. So it's a little bit careful. You got to make your determination. Algorithm loses you 23%. It protects you. doesn't make you money, but it loses you 23%. Two years ago, if you bought, you lost 40%. So yeah. Coin was the first one that got upgraded. Pins, uh, P-I-N-S. This one got a crazy, I think it's $50 price target. Um, 
Let's see, upgrade Argus, $45. Their average price target is $39.59. You're trading at $38, but I did see someone someone put a $50 price target on this. It's expensive. I mean, you know, the forward PE is 28. When you look at Meta, you know, the other one, the forward PE is 22. So I, I think Pinterest, you're looking at Elliott Management still in there. I think you're looking at uh, aggressive investors, but I like that one as well. Uh, the other one, I do own this one, Snap. And, and Snap got an upgrade. Let's see if we see it in Finviz. Um, it may just be delayed. January 7th, reiterated Piper Sandler with a $17 price target. It's sitting at $16.29. I think somebody came out with like a $20 price target on this one. They have earnings coming up. Uh, earnings coming up on February 6th. They're not making money. What's interesting about this one, look, it's capitulated. The MACD is down. The RSI has come down. I mean, you know, if you want any of the technicals, you just had the Golden Cross, your 50 day starting to move down. Your Bollinger Band cinched up. It moved down, but it hasn't taken a huge leg down. They're not making money. Again, we talked about pins having a forward PE of 17. This one's losing money. They, they're, they're losing money and they don't have hopes of making money. But if they, you know, start to, to to spout off their AI, I do hold this one. I hold this one at at probably about an average of eight dollars. So I'm sitting on a nice big gain on this one. Uh, let's look at some social requests. Um, Bisco on Algo. When when do you consider it a missed opportunity? Example: URA still has you in at twenty eight. Um, so he's talking about Trendspider subscribers. Uh, and remember, there's a, a special going on on Trendspider. Click on the link tree. But URA, this is a global uranium. So it has you in at $28, okay? It jumped up here. So you're looking at a $28 kind of up here. Um, it's 11% move to the top, but you've started to fill that gap. So when do I, uh, how do I look at this? Well, the algo isn't, remember, the algo is not going to tell you or buy you something. I look at the performance of the algo compared to the equity. In this one, which is URA, it's a global uranium ETF, it loses you 4% versus buying and holding makes you 41%. That kind of tells me, I don't think I want to use the algorithm, I want to buy the asset. And that's what it tells me. And so what I will do is this this would be more of a long-term play and I'd take a look, step back and I'd take a look at a weekly. And I can see the 50 days moving positive. I've I've confirmation over this nine day, um, and and but the MACD is super high, and it's an overbought thing. So I probably wouldn't look to get in. So I don't use the algo as an absolute bisco. I don't use it. Um, but do, am I looking at yeah the last like several of these um, have just been crazy good gains. I mean if you got in just a, in July. And you're looking at this. You're looking at a 42% gain, even with this pullback. So I, I would again. I don't use the algorithm as specific. Oh my God, I've got to get into this. It's an overall performance thing that I look at. Um, and, and you know, a good example is probably Apple or QQQ. Apple, the algorithm makes you let's see, 39% uh, versus buy and hold 19%. So I think it performs better. But am I using the algorithm on Apple? No. I'm just looking for entry points on Apple. Uh, and this highlights it. You know, the algorithm highlights it. If you want to customize the algorithm, you can do that as well. So Bisco, I think it's less of a, it's more of a, um, hey, learn how the stock or the ETF or things that you're watching uh, react to the algorithm, how it performs. Um, and then make your decision on entries and exits. It, it, you know, the algorithm for me isn't an absolute. It's not something where I say, "Oh my God, I've got to get in." No, oh I've got to, I've got to get out. It's using everything. And if you want to know what everything is, go over to this daily stock pick newsletter. And the education of everything that I use to sum up a, a stock is down here. I'm gonna do part four this weekend. So sign up today. It's a free seven day trial. Kevin from uh, Spotify. Intel seems to be dropping from poor guidance. Does this raise any warning flags for AMD earnings next week? I went over AMD. Uh, AMD is priced absolutely to perfection. Absolutely. It, it, it gives me some warning. Uh, it's down 2% at 176. Uh, that means we're trying. We're starting to get that button hook. Um, God, 
the, the problem I have with AMD is I've got it in a brokerage account. It's not in my retirement account. Between this and SMCI, I mean, we're talking, you know, six-figure gains here in January of, of capital gains that I'm going to have to pay. And I don't know that I necessarily want to do that. So I'm, you know, I'm going to play AMD a little bit different, I think. Um, I, am I worried about it? Yeah. I mean, we went over, the, you know, AMD versus uh, – uh, versus uh, NVIDIA, the forward P of 46 scares the F out of me. I mean, you know, it's average price target is 159. You're trading at 180. Uh, you know, just a couple of days ago, New Street said, hey, the price target is 215. Well, if you think we're getting there with 215 without a crazy, crazy upgrade in guidance, when Intel just guided down, maybe chips are, chips are signal, uh, you know, cyclical. Uh, it's definitely a stock, but AMD is priced to perfection. I've got a large position. Uh, the 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 one that I think I may play, honestly, because of Intel, um, I may do it after uh, after um, uh, the AMD earnings next week. But SOXS, this is the three times uh, bear, uh, so it's the inverse. You can see it. I mean, this is a decaying asset, but we're way down. You're starting to see a little button hook, a little tick up on this one. This one's up five percent today algorithm hasn't gotten you in you know you lose 79 percent versus losing 89 percent if you bought and held this one you don't want to hold this one you know maybe on the 65 minute let's take a look at the 65 minute i'll go on on soxs um does it have you in today yeah 458 so maybe you want to play it on that in pre-market you're at 494 but you've got a gap up here at about 553 you could play this one again i don't like to buy things on a friday um, specifically just, you know, we just bounced back up. It looks like from the, um, from the, the, the CPE number. So, uh, Frank wants me to look at URI. Uh, so uh, hopefully that gives you some uh, information, Kevin, about AMD, but URI United rentals, this one's killed it. I mean, I mean, th there is nothing, they just killed it. Uh, look at their earnings, $11 and they put guidance in, and, and the, the, the ex-dividend date is coming up on February. There's nothing I can tell you. The algorithm makes you 69%. Buying and holding makes you 107%. Over uh, 24 months, you're in 31 positions. If we take a look at this one from a long-term perspective, uh, I'm going to go to Seeking Alpha here. Uh, and we're going to look at URI. But if we go to a weekly, I mean, it's got all the confirmation in the world. Uh, so if we go over here to URI, remember I said in Alpha Picks they have URI. So it it it's it's a buy. Do you want to buy here? That's a tough tough ask because you you know the valuation is a C minus, growth is a C plus, revisions it's eight out of forty five in their uh, in their sector. Um, you can look at all of the tractor supply is the most underweight stock by hedge fund. Uh, you can see most people are saying hold from a, a perspective. Wesco International is the number one, but URI is down here at number. Uh, it's still got a 4.20 in the 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 this um the uh, quant URI. You can look at it. 18 PE. This is a rental company with a PE of 18. That's kind of a little crazy. Average target price 600. You're trading 651. Um, nobody's upgraded since their earnings. I, I would expect today for some of these uh, these ones to come out. But URI, it, it's it's just been one of those that's great. I mean, do you want to buy it? You're going to buy it at all time high. I don't know enough about the company to tell you to buy it, but it's been a solid, solid player. Uh, Mia, Mildridge, uh, interested in your opinion? N N R H I recent uh, spike is it all hype? Let's look. NRHI is natural resources holding. I think most commodity stuff, if this is a commodity one, um, yeah, I mean, it went from $2 to $9. Wow. I mean, look at the volume. The volume spiked. Most likely it's 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 hype. NHRI, it's uh, NRIH. Uh, NRHI. It's not in Finviz. Let's see if it's in Seeking Alpha. NRHI, <clears throat> Natural Resources Holdings. Uh, yeah, I can't find it in Finviz for some reason. Let's see. Um, company profile. There's nothing on this. I mean, 
you know, there's, ugh, it's got no, yeah, it's hype. I mean, it, it's, you know, valuation, nothing's up there. Um, momentum, crazy momentum. Uh, trading volume, uh, volume 32. Average volume, it, it's got no shares. Uh, yeah, corporations, public the public, uh, there's 5 million shares outstanding, 700, 709,000 shares. You're not going to be able to fill that. There's there's no reason to do this. No reason to trade this one. It's it's all hype. Um, I, I, and I can't say that it's hype. It, it's up that far because people are trading it. And I think it's probably retail. Somebody said something about something. More than likely, it's a negative 200 day. It's a negative, a positive 50 day. Everything is move positive. Um but I, I just I don't see it. I don't see it being good. So I, I, I you know, I, I think it's hype trading on a short term. Uh, Orlando, hey Gary, can you take a look at LNTH for me? Uh, LNTH, Lanthius Holdings. Uh, I really like this one. Also, position AMD is too late to add. Been waiting for it to drop. We went over uh, AMD. LNTH, Lanthius Holdings. Hoofa. This does not look like a good chart of recent, and it looks like a nightmare, to be honest with you. Uh, It's come down from, looks like highs. Um, Probably 200 day at 44 would provide you a good support. It's been beaten down. Uh, LNTH, let's look at this one. Uh, LNTH, let's see what they, it has a $3 billion market cap. Uh, It's making money. PE is 36 Ford PE is eight. So they're expecting big things. Year to date is down 15% over one year. You're down 3% target price of 94. Um, but take that with a grain of salt. Cause it doesn't look like it's been covered very much. Uh, William Blair outperformed to market. Um, looks like everybody's selling at the, even at the 50. Um, and they're selling in fairly big lots. Um, all through last year, doesn't look like anybody's buying. Uh, LNTH, let's see this one. Do I think that this one has a hope of coming back? I think I'd trade it on the chart. I, I don't want to tell you not to trade it. Uh, Quant says hold. Um, it's a company. Let's see what they do. Uh, developed manufacturer com- commercializes diagnostic and therapeutic products to assist, assist clinicians. If you use this product, you'll know more about it than I do. Uh, annual revenue looks like it's it's continuing to go up. Uh, if we look at um, earnings per share, looks like it's going up. Full year expected, what dollar forty one? They um, actual dollar forty seven. So they're expecting just a slight upgrade. Um, valuation is C. PE is you know the PE is thirty five. I mean that's what's crazy. Momentum D doesn't have very good momentum. Profitability B plus. I don't like it. But if you want to trade it, I, I think it's good. Uh, AMD, I think I'd stick with AMD personally on that one. Biohazard, uh, RKLB, what do you think? Uh, RKLB, Rocket Labs. Uh, this was a retail favorite from what I remember. Uh, RKLB, let's see what they do. Uh, LB, um, Rocket Labs, they are aerospace um, they are not making money. They're losing $169 million. They've got $0.59 cents, uh, per share. Let's see. Uh, what's $475 million times 0. 0.6? The answer is $285 million. So they have $285 million in cash. They're losing $169. So you're kind of in danger of, of get it, getting diluted. Uh, down 11% just in 26 days. Yeah, 26 days. Uh, you're down 1% over one year. Your average target price is $8.33. You're trading at $4.92. Uh, it's been covered recently with an $8 price target from KeyBank. That's an initiation, so it's new. These guys are selling at rather large lots. I mean, the president sold 3 million, sh- 3 million shares, $20 million value. Um, yeah. That's a lot at $5.62. You're trading at $4.92. I mean, that's where he thinks it's it's overvalued because he sold that much. That's kind of where I'm at. I you know, I, I don't like this one. I don't like companies that aren't making money. Remember, part of the 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 rules of the podcast 
are find good companies with good products, with good management, with good profits. And, and, and you'll be fine. That's the problem. This one doesn't have it. Trade it. Don't own it. Uh, I don't think that it, it, you know, gets, what's the catalyst for it? Are the earnings, you know, that they're signing contract? That's the, the catalyst is what I would, you can see when the, the volume spike here, it's, it's just, it, this is a hype play. This will, will trade 100% on news and you get that volume, you get that stop, that, that movement up. So uh, if you want to trade it, the algorithm loses you 19% versus losing 44%. So uh, yeah, Chris says it's one of his moonshots. I, I'd have to agree with you. I, I think it's a moonshot one, but I, that's why I say I don't think that you 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 know you absolutely get out. My thought is that 447 is in play, just because it's a moonshot one. You know that gap down there to 447 probably gets filled. Let's talk about scans. Uh, Uber. Uh, yeah, Shea Boulard loves go go ask him on Twitter about Rocket Labs. He has fantastic descriptions. Of what he uh, what what he's bullish on, and he's he loves it, he loves it. So you know, I'm probably just listen. You know, Shay and I are, are different guys, um, but Uber Uber is a cross up. Uh, it's crossing up a little bit, a little bullish, not bad. You know, sixty five. I think it's a little bit uh, pushing it. Uh, when I bought Uber down here, this is you know based on the November algo alert. Great trade. I, I thought it was a sixty dollar stock. Obviously, I was you know correct on this one. Uh, a little humbleness on the, on the Intel, but I've been right on this one. Uber is a fantastic, fantastic stock. Uh, if I had to um, take Tesla out, I'd probably put Uber in as as one of the the, the grade eight. So Uber, I, I am big on uh, triple levered ETFs that got some cross ups here because we didn't get a ton of cross ups. Uh, TMF, this is a, a bull on the twenty year Treasury. Uh, 5442 algorithm loses you 33% on this one. You lose 78% if you buy and hold. Remember it's a decaying asset. So you don't want to hold on to this. You absolutely want to trade this. If you think that the 20 year is going to go up, which I don't think the 20 year is going to go up, but that's one that you could do S A R K. If we are going into a downturn, your ARK funds are going to go down. This is an inverse uh, of the A R K K S A R K uh, D R N, which is the bear of the real estate sector, if you think that the real estate sector is going to go down, this one's going to go up, and it's three times levered, $9.41. Uh, of the sectors that got across up, ironically, it's the real estate sector. So make your bets which one you think will be up, XLRE or DRN. I mean, they both got cross-ups, and, and both can't win. Because the market will take one up, it will take the other one down. Uh, one that I I have in my own personal list that I wanted you to look at. It's an interesting one. I don't. I added it for a reason, but it's got a golden cross here, um, and and the golden cross comes while you're in this run from eleven dollars to sixteen dollars. Uh, it is overvalued. It's it is one that again this is in a list that I do not share. Their PE is seven. This is a drug manufacturer. I put this in during COVID probably, um, but I, I, I obviously like the company. $20 target price, ironically. It's up 16% year to date. In November, Goldman downgraded them, but they downgraded them to a $16 price target. The average price target is 20 In September, Barclays initiated with a $28 price target. It's trading at $16, OGN. Do a little bit more research into it, but I saw the Golden Cross. I saw the MACD down. It is overbought at 68 on the RSI, but they have earnings coming up. So I thought this one was interesting. When you take it back, uh, I'm going to pull this volume here. Uh, Let's see. We're going to pull this volume. Oh, grab it already. Uh, to the highs back here during the August earnings. And you can see nice volume shelf building up here. Uh, you know, there's going to be something that pulls it up. Probably the earnings is going to be the catalyst on this one. Uh, Mara, <laughs> I am holding Mara at 26. Uh, it got a cross up. It is up 9% today. 16 was the bounce, 1650. So you, your MACD is way down low. Your RSI is at 37. This is an oversold stock. Uh, am I adding it at, at what, 1776? 
Uh, that's a tough one. I mean, you know, it's so far over. So far, your period, your your um your period, you opened at seventeen twenty two. Uh, you are currently at seventeen seventy six. Your low was sixteen ninety. So it went all the way down to sixteen ninety. It's come back up to seventeen seventy seven. Um, it's on a, a little bit of a run. You can go on a five minute chart there, but that one's an interesting one. Uh, another one that's interesting in the list, and this isn't the whole list, but MRNA, this was in the core portfolio, but I had made mention when it was in the core portfolio, it was in there to trade. This is a hundred dollar stock. Uh, and this was a $400 stock. Now this is a, uh, drug vaccine manufacturer. They have COVID vaccine and that's it. It's their only product. Year to date, it's up 3%. Over one year, you're down 47%. The average uh, target price is 129. Take that with a grain of salt. Um, upgrade January 2nd, Oppenheimer said it's a $142 stock. There is there is no buys. Uh, uh, who's the, uh, um, the Stefan Bonsal, who's the CEO? This dude has sold more stock in the, in this company at, at all covered prices. I mean, he was selling at four hundred. He was selling at three hundred. Um, he had it absolutely where he became a billionaire off this stock. So I'm a little bit concerned about it, but I thought I brought it up because I do think you can trade this one on a short time frame. Got a cross up here at one hundred two, and, and if you don't know what cross up is, go over to the Daily Stock Pick newsletter. You can get at the education right here. Cross up, Bollinger Band, Levered ETF, Confirmation, MACD, PE, Golden Cross, Death Cross. All of that's in, in the three-part education series. Fourth part is coming up this weekend. There are your scans. There's everything. I am out of here. I got to go edit this together because I got to get out to lunch. You guys have yourself a great weekend. Look forward to the newsletter. I apologize to anybody that followed me into Intel. But I give you a pat on the back if you followed me into Netflix, if you followed me out of Tesla, um, if you did any of the things that I said and you made money, remember, gift the old man with Venmo. <laughs> I hold PayPal. Let's get Venmo back in, 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 into, you know, in, into existence. Venmo is my preferred platform. Don't, don't ask me why. I just like it. It just acts way better. PayPal sucks. The app is horrible. Cash app, love it. I love it. It's kind of like Weeble. Uh, you know, my main account is in Fidelity. Do I like the Fidelity app? Hell no, I don't like the Fidelity app. It's gotten better, but it's still not good. So if you have any questions, hit me up. Uh, take care. I will talk to you Monday. Take care. Bye-bye. The trading bell, my heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast in my ears, guiding me through my hopes and fears. Tune in daily, don't miss a single show. Sign up for the newsletter, let us help you grow. Taking risks, making moves, seeking success. Together we'll conquer, no room for any less. Every morning I wake up to the sound of the trading bell. My heart starts to pound. Daily stock day trading podcast. My hopes and fears